Hey everybody, Michael Snud here, California Weather Watch. Today is July 25th, and right now we're looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can see California, Hawaii, intertropical convergence zone. That's a subject for another video at a later date, but you can see that bubbling down there across some of the tropics over the Pacific Ocean. You've got the ridge of high pressure here over our area, allowing some monsoon moisture to get back up across the western periphery of that ridge. Take a look at that in a little bit more detail here in a moment. This is looking Southern Cal weather history, July 25th. Check it out, uh, remnants of tropical cycle over the eastern Pacific swept northward along Baja, California, brought San Diego a nice rainfall there. So this can happen from time to time. And also powerful storms out over the Pacific Ocean here can bring some nice swell this time of year. Check it out. Two people drowned in the surf on this day back in 2009 and hundreds were rescued from rip currents by lifeguards. Minor structural damage also reported there. So great stuff here from the National Weather Service San Diego reminding us what can happen at this time of year. This is chance of measurable precipitation today. And this would be thunderstorm activity you can see Big Bear Lake, not virtually zero chance here across the San Diego or Los Angeles metro, but you might see some stuff bubbling up across some of the interior, the desert and the higher terrain. This is looking at thunderstorm threat across some of Arizona today. Tucson, Prescott doing better versus Phoenix, lower elevation here. You can see the Mongolian Rim, the higher terrain out there, and lower chances out towards the California deserts. Not expecting severe wind gusts with this, but you can get some blowing dust. The storms probably pop up between 1 and 2 and last on through the evening hours. And again, Phoenix, Arizona is still dealing with this very dangerous, a long duration heat wave, major and extreme values here. And you can see this goes all the way through Friday. Some very warm temperatures, potentially will put an end to this 110 uh, degree day streak for Phoenix as we go towards the weekend, but we're probably headed towards probably 30 days of 110 plus for Phoenix, shattering the all-time record that we did have of 19 days. This is looking at some heat across some of the valley areas, Death Valley here. This isn't too crazy here, but it's just kind of showing you what's going on. You see Death Valley pushing up into the 120 area uh, or range here as we go through the next couple days as well. Always good graphics here from National Weather Service Las Vegas. And I wanted to show you guys this one afternoon highs. Hoover Dam, Laughlin, Needles out towards Lake Havasu City. Very warm overnight lows out there. So, you know, we're still dealing with the heat out here across the region. What else is new, right? That was issued yesterday. This is looking at Las Vegas. There is a slight chance of a thunderstorm there. And again, across the desert, it's not too high of chances here, but you can't rule it out. And the further you go east into Arizona, definitely the better chances for those thunderstorms uh, will occur. This is thunderstorm possible this afternoon, 2 to 8 p.m. Now, looking at wildfire safety, you know, when I'm out bike, biking around, I see people actually throw cigarette butts out their window. And so, yeah, so just kind of have a heads up. I don't think people mean to do that, or maybe they don't understand. But, you know, keep vehicles off your dry grass, watch the chains hanging from the cars, and just kind of keep in the back of your mind that most of these fires are caused by humans. Now, taking a look here, we've got the showers of uh, chance of showers and thunderstorms here, I should say. There's Flagstaff, you can see Peach Springs, there's Phoenix, lower elevation here, uh, lesser chance, and of course, across the Mongolian Rim there. You can see better chances there. And the further you go to the west, the lesser your chances of getting some of these thunderstorms is going to be. And any underneath any one of these strong storms, you can get some brief heavy rain that can cause some localized flooding there. And as always, these storms do contain dangerous lightning with them. This is Death Valley 122 yesterday. And if you went from South Lake Tahoe down to Death Valley, you could hit both areas there. The, the lowest temperature across the USA and the highest temperature in the same day. Quite a shock to the system. Now we're going to look at the GFS here. This is 500 mil bars up towards 18,000 feet, kind of showing you general ridge and trough position. You can see the system went through the Pacific Northwest here. Now watch they put this into motion. You see our ridge kind of here, and it starts to weaken just a hair. They're scrolling out past 100 hours. There you can, it's hanging on. It's taking its sweet time. But you'll see some weakness there in the 500 millibars there. And we might get some increased monsoon moisture as we go on in towards next week into early August. But then look what this GFS has been showing. It's actually been showing this the last several runs. And look at this nasty dynamic ridge here very intense heat dome setting up right over california and i don't think anybody wants to see this was being extremely warm temperatures all the way up across pacific northwest even into canada here and look at this ridge just hang out and it's a purely classical gfs fantasy forecast at this point but i don't think anybody wants to see this happen the european is actually showing a little bit of a ridge building here as well so we'll see how this trends on and through the next few days i'm just kind of showing it because it's been kind of trending here in the GFS. Something of note to watch as we go into early August. This is looking at that European, the control run as of yesterday afternoon. 
It's a little speed ahead here. You can see the ridge hanging out, taking a sweet time to get out of here. You see a bit of a weakness here in the 500 mil bar, maybe some increase in some monsoon moisture here coming across the southwest here as we go towards early August. And then you can see some semblance of that ridge redeveloping here. How far west will that get? It's going to mean everything. But you can see this is kind of, this would be shutting off the monsoon for the most part or at least extremely limiting it here across the region and you know that's a little bit of similarity there between the european and the gfs but it's so far out in fantasy land right now it's just something for entertainment purposes right now just something to watch and be prepared for this is day one thunderstorm out you can see even some uh, severe wind gusts maybe across some of eastern nevada up through utah here and that includes some of the california deserts as well day two pushes off to the east a little bit here and day three kind of a repeat there this will be thursday through Friday morning shown there. Now this is looking at the European last night's run. Total precipitation in inches. As we go through the afternoon and day, you'll see those thunderstorms develop. Maybe a thunderstorm across some of the higher terrain this year in Nevada here. Some of Nevada there also. <clears throat> and the mountains of California, as we mentioned earlier. Tomorrow afternoon. A little bit of a repeat there. Didn't show much of an increase there across precipitation. That's why they brought the thunderstorms off to the east for the most part. As you go through Thursday afternoon, you got kind of a repeat there across portions of Arizona here. So nothing too crazy coming out there for California this round here. And, and you can see the Arizona precip there as well. This is the Mongolian rim here. So you can kind of see where Phoenix is, Prescott. You see Flagstaff is here, White River down here, and there's Tucson. So, of course, across the higher terrain, better chances for thunderstorms as general rule. This is looking at the GFS. So we're going to go way out into the extended here. We're going to take a look at some of that extended forecast because you could see where that weakness occurred in some of the 500 millibar heights here. And we brought some more monsoon moisture. These are 24 hour totals here. We're just kind of running through a 24 hour running total. And you can see that up across uh, Arizona, you know, we got a little bit of an uptick in the monsoon, at least for a bit. But then watch what happens is that huge ridge would just dominate the weather here across California, Nevada, and some of Arizona here as well. As you know, we kind of cut off that precip and keep it off to the southeast and the southern zones. But again, that's just a fantasy forecast. We're just kind of taking a look at what would happen across the area if that dynamic ridge developed over California in the extended. We're looking way out here. So check this out. This is the European Ensemble. They run this every day. It's actually 101 Ensemble members averaged. So if we just scroll all the way through, you can see we're like 500 plus hours out by this point. But if California is not getting monsoon moisture this time of year, you can see relatively light amounts here. And a lot of the coastal area is pretty dry. It is the dry time of the year. It is showing some precip across the Sierra Nevada there. And you can see some of that monsoon moisture impacting Arizona all the way through early September here. So just kind of an interesting look at the European Ensemble extended run here. Again, 100 members are in that run. Uh, this is the six to 10 day probability outlook. You can see the, some of that monsoon moisture showing up here in the National Weather Service extended outlook. Eight to 14 day here kind of bounces back to the north, but you know, nothing below average for now. We'll take it. This is six to 10 day temperature probability outlook. You're kind of uh, returning back to normal here across some of the valley areas of California. Not too bad. Eight to 14 day here continued above average across a lot of Arizona and Nevada here. We'll see how this trends though. Don't, you know, don't put too much into that right now. Now, this is looking at Phoenix, and you can see 110 plus to Saturday, and I think it today would be 25, or maybe it's 26, I forget, 27, 28, 29, 30. And then maybe we get under 110 for a few days before bouncing back up maybe a little bit here. But you can see generally above average through the 15-day period here. This is Bakersfield, a little bit above average, no no scorching heat wave going on right now and you can see the average temperature this time of year right around the 103 104 mark dropping down as we start to slide into august sacramento somewhere around normal here so not too bad temperatures getting up towards 100 degrees Eureka, I always like showing this one here. You can see the average temperature for this time of year still increasing as you go into early August, but is that really even notable? There you can see 60 to 61 and you know, living on the coastline there, you get a nice moderate climate until the offshore winds start coming. This is San Francisco, something similar there, kind of hovering around average, maybe a little bit below here through the extended. This is Santa Monica, pretty close to the coastline there, but still not too bad. You're not getting the strong onshore flow. So you are above average here, average temperature this time of year in the upper 70s up towards 80 degrees here and then back down towards average maybe through the extended this is burbank go inland a little bit here you can see how that heat does increase there it starts tailing off as you go on to the early portion of next week 
Now here we're looking at July 1st through July 24th. You can see much of the west here well above average. The plains below average, some of the northeast and some of the east coast above average too. But yeah, not doing too bad here. We are increasing these temperatures as we continue through July with the above average conditions across the southwest here. This is the yin and yang here between the west and the east so far this year. A little bit above average as a whole across the country. Now this is looking at fire danger here. So if we go to windy and dry is that H. So there is some fire potential out there. The yellow is pretty much low risk and the green is little to no risk. Still doing good from a lot of snow that fell across a lot of the Sierra Nevada out there. Doesn't mean you still can't cause some fires though across the area. It is still summertime. So anyway, yeah, um, we will go ahead and just continue to watch that ridge. That's something that's caught my interest here. If the GFS and the European keep showing that, it's something that's eventually going to get some traction in the media, and you'll probably start hearing about it right now. It's still purely just entertainment purposes only. It's just a fantasy forecast, just something to watch as we go out through the extended, you know. So anyway, take it with a grain of salt right now. But anyway, uh, keep clicking like, subscribe, leave some comments below, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.